for more. We're joined by Selena Sier. She's the head of consumer research at Mirai Asset Securities. Her recommendations on beer makers like Tsingtao and China Resources Enterprise have generated returns of more than 20 percent. Selena, uh, China's move to boost domestic consumption is, is gathering pace in light of volatility in export markets. At the same time, though, the government is tightening credit and lending. How will this affect domestic demand, real incomes, household debt? I think um, when household debt is concerned, most of it's mostly related to homes or residences. And when people are borrowing for their homes, that's mainly contained within the coastal area. And after all, um, the bulk of the population is still in the inland. And therefore, when credit tightening is concerned, I think it's not affecting most of the population. And that's why I think the government's trying to stimulate demand or stimulate consumption in the inland area, so central and western area. The latest that we've heard is like subsidies for building materials so that the farmers can build their homes, and also subsidies for commercial farming as well as the durables like electrical appliances and automobiles. Uh, given the tightening, it does seem like returns from stock and property investments may be lower. What will that mean for spending? Um, actually, um, I don't associate a lot. Um, with uh, credit tightening to the consumption yeah, in China, because um, a lot of the consumption still is based on cash instead of credit. But having said that, I think you're referring to the um, stock market um, gains that a lot of the uh, investors are having, um, so that the market's expecting them to, in turn, spend on uh, private consumption or uh, retail goods. Um, that, I think, is still accounting for quite a small portion of the general spending as a whole. Um, in fact, the real household income um, is still on the rise because a lot of the jobs that people are, are having um, are giving them quite a pay rise, um, at least in 2010 or 2011. Our guest today from Allianz was saying that it's going to be a very volatile market. What investment themes should investors be looking out for? I think for 2010, we're expecting food inflation because um, the food price CPI had tilted up ever since the third quarter of last year. And for this year, probably it's going to go even higher. And therefore, inflation is definitely going to be a theme. And the major beneficiary of such um, would include most probably supermarkets and the sectors that's going to have strong pricing power. And to me, that would include breweries. And among your picks for uh, brewers include China Resources Enterprise, Tsingtao. Why are they the best proxies for this particular sector? Um, because they are the number one and number two players in brewery in China. And therefore, we do expect both ASP, so selling price, to move up, therefore to support the margin um, increase in 2010. What kind and of increase are you that, anticipating? Um, I'm anticipating less than one percentage point increase in the gross margin for 2010. But that should um, translate into quite a substantial growth in net profit during the year. And therefore, for both companies, I would expect them to deliver above average earnings growth. Uh, can you quantify that, above average? Um, average consumption growth in China in the past 10 years has been around 10 to 15 percent every year. And I'd expect both Qingdao and CRE to deliver more than 15 percent net profit growth in 2010. And in, terms, and in terms of upside for those stocks by the end of the year, where do you see them headed? I would expect them to deliver at least 20 percent price increase. Selena, you have a buy recommendation as well on meat supplier, China Urine Food. I mean, this stock, along with vegetable grower Chowda and noodle maker Ting Yi, have the lowest price to earnings growth ratios among Asian consumer stocks. Does that make sense? Does that, or rather, does that make these stocks attractive? I think PEG ratio may not be the catalyst to share price performance. The main reason for that is because E is a moving element. When we're talking about most probably input raw material price to move up, um, some of the companies may not have the pricing power to increase product prices, and therefore sustainability of margin can be uh, problematic for 2010. And therefore, not all of them um, would see a share price increase in 2010. Having said that, I will focus on the companies that's having um, or going to benefit from government policy. We've seen the government quite determined 
to support the upstream farming um, sectors, and therefore I would choose the ones that's closest to the upstream. And um, among the three companies that you've mentioned about, um, we do like urine. Uh, what would, in your view, what would be the biggest risk in uh, investing in this company? Um, biggest risk would be execution. That's always been a problem um, for some of the smaller companies uh, in China. Um, whether or not management would be able to execute their business plans according to their drawing board um, is the major problem. Or major Selena, risk. another stock that you like. Another stock that you like with mass appeal is Sinopharm, China's biggest drug distributor. Uh, but it's gained more than 60 percent since its debut in Hong Kong and is trading at a higher earnings multiple for next year versus its peers. Why does Sinopharm deserve that premium? Um, I will still be focusing on growth. I believe that Sinopharm is going to outgrow both its peer companies as well as the sector. And, um, Actually, if you were to look at the valuation compared to most of the listed A-share pharmaceutical companies, um, the Sinopharm's uh, PE is not that high. Okay.